Hi, my name is Jan Mishak, and you're listening to History in the Making. Enjoy. The Montreal Canadiens select. The Montreal Canadiens are proud to select. Yes, Barry Kotkanemi. Ryan Paling. Cole Caulfield. Hello, everyone, and welcome to History in the Making, the official podcast of the Montreal Canadiens. It's focused on the future of the most storied franchise in pro sports. History in the Making is brought to you by Tricolor Sport, Montreal's official team store. From lifestyle brands to jerseys and beyond, Tricolor Sport has a style for every sports fan in your in your life, including Cole Caulfield fans. You want that Cole Caulfield merch? You go to tricolorsport.com and use coupon code HistoryCH at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Visit tricolorsport.com today. Our guest this week is one of my favorite prospects. Um, fun guy. Like I, I remember on draft day, I, I spoke to a couple of guys and a lot of the prospects are all business, but Yan Mishak, when he was selected by the Canadians was just all smiles. He was beyond happy. And I love seeing that it's okay to be stoic, but it's okay to admit when you're 17 and 18, that it's pretty darn exciting to be drafted by a team, especially the Montreal Canadians. So um, we're going to get into it with him. We're going to talk about, you know, the challenges of coming over um, to North America from Europe. Uh, not just the on-ice challenges, the cultural challenges. So Jan is a fantastic guy, you know, hard worker too, a lot of talent. He's playing in the HL at 18, which is ridiculous. So we're going to get to him shortly. But first, a uh, prospect update. I'm going to focus on the Laval Rocket this week. Um, things are going just incredibly well for Laval. They're first in the AHL in points percentage. So, I mean, if there was a Calder Cup this year, there isn't. Uh, I'd suggest they're by far the favorites, but regardless, they're the best team in the AHL right now. And, you know, it's not even close. Like they're dominating their opponents. The closest competition in the division right now is Manitoba. Um, they're rocking about a 500 save percentage. Laval is closer to about 800, right? So, um, and all, almost all their wins have come in regulation. Just goes to show like they're not just winning. Yes, hard work and all that, but they're flat out dominating their opponents. Um, a big part of that is Ryan Paling's play. We spoke to Stefano Lani, who's actually uh, the conditioning coach for Laval and also works with the Canadians. And he explained to us um, one of the key things when it comes to younger players is not only did Ryan work on his weaknesses this summer, and he, he did, like he admitted to it, um, his skating is better, he's stronger, but also it takes a little while for your body to adapt to the rigors of a full professional season. Uh, you lose weight, you know, you have those, those injuries that kind of linger. Um, So you kind of have to grow into your professional bodies. For most players, not named Connor McDavid, takes a few years. He's slowly approaching a point-per-game pace, you know, which is like fantastic given Ryan Paling's production in the NCAA. I was never expecting a ton of points. He's kind of surpassing my expectations this year. And um, he's doing it the right way. You know, it's a cliche to say 200-foot hockey, but that's what Ryan Paling is playing right now. So it's the type of play, not just the production, but the way he's playing will get him back in that discussion to be back with the Montreal Canadiens. I remember Joel Bouchard. I mean, he was addressing the media, but he turned to me at one point, like literally, and says like, you got you to give him a breather. You got to let Ryan Paling breathe a little bit. And um, full marks to Joel for that, because that was obviously it. He's focusing on what needs to be done and he's really achieving it. So um, if last year worried anyone, and it, I mean, it shouldn't have, but I get it. Like I get why people were worried. This season should go a long way in restoring that faith and more importantly, restoring patience when it comes to prospects. It's not fun, but we got to have the patience. Um, I also want to keep a little, you know, some attention towards Alex Bezel, who just returned from injury. We spoke to him on the French podcast for History in the Making. It's called L'Histoire s'écrit. And um, again, great guy. And that seems to be a common theme in the Laval Rocket, like a lot of good people. Uh, but a lot of talented people and Alex Bezel falls into that role. He's producing, which is great. Um, but, you know, he's providing leadership for players he's competing with for a role with the Canadians. So to me, I mean, it's quite the juxtaposition there, right? Like you want to help these guys, but they might take your job or they might take the job that you're competing for. So full marks to him for um, embracing that role. He's not going to let himself be beat out by these younger guys just to, you know, uh, just to give him a chance. He'll work hard but it'll help them get to that point too. And that's something that Jordan Wheel, we kind of forgot about him, but God, he's been a fantastic pro um, for that about Rocket. Yeah, he's producing, but like he's been essentially the, you know, nothing but a professional for, for, for Laval. And uh, again, providing a veteran leadership when he's well within his right to not be supremely satisfied. He was in the NHL last year, AHL this year, but he's doing exactly what they asked from him. And that to me is a consummate pro. So full marks to Jordan Wheel. 
we're going to jump into the mailbag and we're going to get to Meshach because again, like you guys want to hear him talk. Obviously he's fun. You know, just 18 years old. It's pretty crazy. He's playing uh, in North America, but someone, uh, Francine Ashe wants to know which rocket prospect should we keep an eye on and not necessarily some of the names we constantly hear. Okay. I get this question a lot. Uh, Otto Leskinen. I really like what I see from Otto Leskinen. Uh, you have uh, Jesse Yulon is, you know, he's got that kind of shot that deceives. Uh, he doesn't look that fantastic. His release doesn't look great, but, it, you know, he's got accuracy. He's got speed. So uh, Jesse Yulon is one that I'm keeping a close eye on. And uh, Lucas Vedemo has started to produce a little bit more. So I kind of pin him down to bottom six role, but hey, man, hard worker. Like he's a coach's dream and they really, really, really like Vedemo. So, uh, you know, when Bouchard, gravitates towards certain players it's not always because of talent it's a meritocracy basically in Laval um, you play well you work hard you're going to get the minutes and that's what's happening with Lucas Vedemo but my ultimate answer Rafael Harvey Pinar like it's not even close right now he's a coach's dream in my opinion um, yeah he's a little older as a rookie but he's doing exactly what you want to see from him and, and I mean keep in mind this guy's a seventh round pick so him along with Primo are actually two seventh round picks that Habs might hit on, which is fantastic. And there's still Jake Evans. So it goes to show the development. It's a lot healthier in the AHL now, but we'll give credit to Rafael Hervé Pinot. Um, he really, and I hate doing this, but he really reminds me of Gallagher. I mean, it's Gallagher, AHL Gallagher. That's who he is. You know, uh, he, he eats a lot of lumber, goes into those dirty areas, but he gets up as soon as he gets knocked down and he scores more often than he doesn't. So, I am a big Raphael Hervé Pinal fan. Keep him on your radar. I'm not saying he's going to make the NHL immediately or even next year and make a huge impact, but he's the type of player you can mold into an efficient NHLer, in my opinion. And I think the coaches in Laval agree. Uh, all right. Um, there's also that other process we spoke about, Jan Mishak. Uh, you know, most exciting players in the team, in my opinion. If you look at his stats right now, he's got two goals, okay, in, I don't know, 13 games. I'm not even looking at his stats. It's more the fact that he's 18 years old and he's playing professional hockey and he's absorbing so much right now. It's not just the fact that he's absorbing from his coaches. He's absorbing this whole cultural change. So we're going to get into it with him. He's a great guy. One of my favorite players to talk puck with. And, um, you know, just we're, we're going to try to kind of listen about the challenges involved coming over as a European player. I feel like we don't always pay attention to that. It, it is genuinely much more difficult, but it helps to have a fantastic attitude. And that's exactly what Jan Mishak has. So, We'll be back with Canadian's prospect, Jan Mishak, right after this short break. If you're anything like me, you enjoy watching fantastic players like Tyler Toffoli, like Josh Anderson, like Brendan Gallagher, some of the best goal scorers in the NHL. You can get all the merchandise at TricolorSpa.com. Don't forget to visit TricolorSpa for all your Toffoli, Anderson, and Gallagher needs. I'm here with a very exciting Canadian's prospect. He's one of the prospects that I, I get a chance to speak to a lot of coaches and they all love working with him. They're excited about him uh, because he's got a fantastic attitude and it's none other than Jan Mishak, a recent draft pick of the Montreal Canadiens. Jan, how's it going, man? Ah, all is good. Thank you for inviting. How are you? I am great. Uh, I'm in a little different situation from you. I'm at home. You're at the rink, right? Or, or I mean, a lot. How has it been this year, man? Like, how's, how's this transition been for you? Um, not just on the ice, because you've learned a lot, but off the ice. How has this been? It's been a pretty crazy journey, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I just think and I believe that I was kind of lucky uh, because of this COVID, because uh, I get this big opportunity to be in Laval. So I'm kind of lucky, and uh, it's it's kind of hard to, to follow the rules and uh, – a lot of different things, but uh, yeah, it's just right now routine and I don't have a problem with that. Now, let, let, let's go back a little bit because this is a fantastic opportunity. And I love that you see, see again, you're going with a positive attitude and I love that. Let's get your backstory a little bit. Um, who, who was the biggest influence in your life when it comes to hockey? Uh, who got you involved in hockey? When did it start and all that fun stuff? Um, like in the hockey side, Probably um, there, there are two person. Uh, first is my brother because he's like three years older and uh, he, he, he was the first one who played hockey in our family. So uh, I always like to watch his games and uh, practices. And that's that's Josef, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, the second person, the, the hockey person is uh, Izzy Schlager. He's, uh, he's a legend of, of my hometown and of my uh, country. So he's the person who was the GM of my team. Uh, back in Czech and uh, 
he he helped me a lot and uh, he was kind of my uh, favorite and role model. So, and I guess it's good because now I know how it's pronounced because I always said it was Yuri Schlager, but now we know how it's pronounced. So how did it start, uh, Jan? How did, when did you start playing hockey? Who, who, who got you to put the skates on and did you cry or were you excited? I, everyone tells me either they were super excited or they were crying. They didn't want to do it. Which one yeah. were you? <laughs> I, was the, I was the second one. Uh, and the first, I, yeah, I started when I was like three years old. And uh, I hate it. I hate uh, to put the clothes on and uh, it was so heavy. So I hate it. But I had a deal. I had a good deal with my parents. And they always told me uh, if, if you would go for the practice, we'd buy you the hot dog. So that was my thing. That's what I wanted. <laughs> so you did it all for the hot dog. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's good because we talk about, and we're going to get into cultural differences, but that's how my parents bribed me too. Um, you know, if you, if you stay quiet at church, you go, you go to McDonald's. So it was the same type of thing, right? <laughs> yeah. And when did you realize that you're pretty darn good at this? Like there might be a future for you. Did you... Did you do it for the hot dog until you were 10 or did you start to figure it out before that? <laughs> no, the, the hot dog was only first year. But uh, <laughs> next time I was so excited when we started to play games. Uh, it was probably a year after, maybe maybe later. But, uh, you know, first first years of my hockey career wasn't the games, only practicing. So that wasn't fun. <laughs> but uh, then it was pretty exciting to, to play games finally and uh, I was so happy that I can play I can score some goals like the like the older guys and pros so that was that was pretty good for me but when I really realized and uh, I really started to focus on uh, my things my my hockey side was when I turned like 15 years old I started to get really seriously and uh, I started to take my whole time to the hockey. Uh, I skipped the school and uh, all I did was just hockey. So, so right around when it was, that was what the under 16 team with uh, Litvinov. Am I saying that right? Litvinov. <laughs> uh, not even close. Not even close. Okay. Oh, yeah. geez. I'm not, I'm not doing very good with the pronunciations. It's okay. um, <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Now you told me on draft day, there's a pretty cool link with the Canadians there, right? Can you, Elaborate a little bit on um, your father, and I believe he played tennis against someone called Peter Zvoboda. Am I am I right? <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't play tennis with him. No, your father though. Didn't you tell me that your father used to play tennis with uh, Peter Zvoboda? Weren't yeah, I think so. But, but I will be honest. I'm not sure if it was him or his brother. But you know yeah. what? We're gonna we're gonna tell the story like it was him. We're just gonna <laughs> from now on end. It was your father. Okay. Um, but Peter brought you to Montreal, right? Like he he showed you around the city, didn't he? I was here in Montreal two years ago, and uh, I spent a week with him, and he showed me the city. Uh, I uh, was on the ice with his brother. He's a skills coach, so uh, me and my brother, we had a really good time here, actually. What was your first impression of the city, if you don't mind? I'm not from here either. I come from a different province, but I'd like to get, because it's a unique, a lot of people say it has a European vibe. Now, you're from Europe. Is that true? Is there a European vibe to Montreal? <laughs> uh, actually, it's a pretty yeah, general but, thing to say, right? Like, what does European vibe mean? So, what was your reaction to getting here for the first time? Um, uh, I was in shock, actually, of course, because I'm um, from the town who has like twenty six thousand people, so it's kind of small. And uh, when I arrived here, it was like, "Ooh, that's the city from movie, eh?" <laughs> so, yeah, I was in shock. I always wanted to go to groceries, buy some candies. What What do you have? here and uh i was i was impressed yeah we don't have good chocolate but we have good candy uh i know for a fact that you, that in, in there's a lot better chocolate elsewhere in the world um what was their reaction when you made that decision to leave your czech club um to head to hamilton i, I like you were young it, it must have taken a lot of um thought for thought what was the reaction back home when you decided i'm going to north america i mean like people yeah, from, from, let's say, from the media and the people in uh, Czech Republic. Uh, I believe they, they understand to it. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was my big decision. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that I made this decision because, you know, I spent there like 17 years. And uh, for me, I just realized that it's important to go from my comfort zone and uh, try 
try uh, something new. Uh, not new, just move closer to my dream, you know. My dream is to play in NHL, so I just wanted to, to, to play um, in Canada, in North America, and uh, I'm really happy that I made this decision. Yeah, there's no there's no regrets whatsoever with uh, with that decision because I mean, you're really I, I think we we kind of lose track of it. Is when I was 18, I didn't move. Not you, you didn't just move a city. You didn't just move a country. You moved to a completely different continent. Yeah. Like, are there <laughs> any? There's no regrets whatsoever with your decision. Oh, of course not. Uh, cool. So uh, so far yeah. it's been pretty fun. But do you ever miss anything from back home? That's one thing I'd like to know. Um, it's a culture shock, right? To come here. Like, do you ever miss any of your just it could it could be food, it could be theater? Mm-hmm. Like, do you ever miss anything from back home? Yeah, sometimes I uh I miss the food. It's amazing. Uh, I believe that we have a like different kind of food than here. So I kind of miss it. But uh in this uh, age it's pretty good that uh when I need somebody to call my parents, friends, I can call them uh, on a FaceTime or something. So that's easy. So I would say the food, yeah. Have you, and I ask everyone because I've tried it a few times. Have you tried this thing we call putsin yet? Have you tried uh, it? It's like, it's like cheese curds and, it, it, and it, 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 there's fries and there's gravy and it's really oh, unhealthy. Yeah. And Stefano Lani would not be happy <laughs> I, if you're eating it. Yeah. I, I remember this thing. Uh, when I was 13 years old, I was in Quebec for PV tournament. And uh, I always wanted to try the corn dog. Right. And I never know how, how it's called. So I went to the the shop to buy it, and I didn't know what to do. I just saw the poutine and uh, hot dog, everything. So I was like, "What is the the thing? The the corn dog? How it's called here?" So I was like, "Oh, I want a poutine. That's gonna be it." So they just gave me a completely different thing: the the fries and the cheese on it. So I was like. What's that? <laughs> so you, we call, I don't we, like it. <laughs> you know, okay, okay. Because you were waiting for it. And you know what? Everyone else calls it a corn dog. We call it a pogo here. A pogo. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so you didn't love the poutine. But what other... And I, I'm honestly curious. What other culture shocks have there been since you've come here? I mean, I'm sure there's some things that you're like, what the heck is this? Um, obviously, it's been different. You're, you're, you know, you're a little restricted in your movement. But has there ever been any point where you were kind of confused with... You know, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of new things in your lives. Was there any point where you're like, oh, oh, I don't really understand what's going on right now? Yeah, of course. Um, always for me, it was when you when you came to the new place. So I remember my first week in Hamilton. Uh, it was like a lot of new things. Uh, my mind was like this. So I didn't know what, what should I focus on first. So uh, always the first, first week is tough. Uh, same like here. But maybe it was for me a little easier because uh, I, I've been in uh, North America before. So uh, it was maybe more easier. And uh, the people here always help me when I need that. So especially the coaches, the biggest problem was uh, the new things on the ice. So that was uh, the, the big problem. And uh, here the coaches are really good. So they helped me with that. And uh, they're helping me still. So that's good. Okay, we're going to get to those two things, your time in Hamilton and your time in Laval. But first, if there was any younger player right now um, in Europe that's kind of, you know, because it's a big decision, what kind of advice would you give them as they're deciding, maybe I'm going to make the jump? Because, hey, we know you can make a career in the NHL by staying in Europe for a while, too. What kind of advice would you give to young players that are making the same kind of decision that you made uh, not too long ago? Uh, I would just say my, my kind of story that... Uh... I've been home my almost whole life. And uh, for me, it's important that uh, I have to get out of my comfort zone because out of the zone, the thing's going to happen, you know. So uh, even if you move from your home, that's the the, the move out from the comfort zone. So uh, the thing's going to happen. So it's it's uh, really, really important to, if you have a dream, to go for it. And uh, my dream is to play in the NHL. So I went for it. I just, I just want to go for it. And uh, I went to North America to do next step. So, so you just kind of have to take a bit of a leap, right? You just kind of have to like, hope it works out well and just, you know, you know, and, and try your hardest. Is that it? That's basically the only uh, way to go about it. Cause there's no guarantee, right? Yeah, of course it's no guarantee, but uh, um, if you want to do it, you have to try it. You have to make your first step, you know? 
Joël Bouchard would love that answer. Now, let's go back a little bit. I had a chance to speak to Steve Steos, who was uh, your general manager and your coach in Hamilton. He had nothing but uh, actually, I'll tell you exactly what he had to say. Um, he's unique. He's talking about you right now. Uh, he's an intelligent young man who has a great positive attitude towards life. The first thing that stands out with Yann is how professional he is when he first got him. He came over with an amazing focus and was really diligent in not only on ice preparation, but off ice as well, which is impressive. He was really trying to find out exactly what the coaches wanted from him, especially away from the puck. Why do you take that approach? Why do you take that approach that you always need to know more and learn more? And um, obviously it serves you well, but where did that come from? Where, where did you start being obsessed with getting better? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I just um, have it inside to, 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 to be better every, every day. And uh, that's what the Alex Burroughs told me here. And uh, it's kind of good advice. To, to, the goal is to be better every day. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, probably I spent some, some time with uh, pros in Czech and I saw them like uh, how they work and uh, how they uh, try to do things and how to learn. So that, that kind of inspired me. Maybe that's it. Speaking of pros in Czech, Jaromir Jäger is still playing hockey. Okay, I know he owns the team, <laughs> and I, I believe he's playing with Kokanets right now. Um, like, he's kind of a mythical figure here in North America. We look at him as like a hockey god. How do you guys look at Jaromir uh, back home? Of course, uh, he's, a, he's a legend. <laughs> so <laughs> there's nothing, nothing... Uh... He, when I was young, uh, I, I I still have his posters uh, next yeah. to my bed and checks. When he was with the Penguins or when he was with still, it was what was it, Kladno back then or? Yeah, Kladno, but I have a Penguins posters. <laughs> I did, were you, were you, I guess you didn't really see him when he was playing with Mario Lemieux then, right? Like, because that was some of the best hockey. I think it was a 19-year-old Yarmir Jagger playing with Mario Lemieux. It was the best combination <laughs> ever. Did you get a chance to ever watch them? Um, I'll maybe send you from- tape. From from the Penguins, they were very very good together. I'll send you yeah, tape. Yeah, I know. Of course, I I saw some uh, recap from that, but uh, it's kind of a long time ago. So. Yeah, and they're playing. It looks like they're like the the Harlem Globetrotters. They're not letting anyone touch the puck. It was just fantastic to see. Oh yeah. But <laughs> a lot of the coaches say you have some of that same talent, Jan. Um, one of the coaches that talked really highly of you, obviously, was Alex Burrows, even Daniel Jacob. But your current coach, Joel Bouchard, was saying. He's got an open approach and he's taken a shine to you. What's your relationship been with Joel Bouchard so far? Uh, for me, uh, for me, it's it's a really good relationship because, uh, like I said, when I came, it was kind of hard, uh, a lot of new things. And uh, the guys, the, the coaching stuff make it so easy. You know, <laughs> I was I was surprised that uh, a lot of things to my mind, to my to my head and uh they, they showed me like so easy for me. So uh, it was pretty good. And that, that, that's what helped me. And uh, it still continues. Uh, it's every day learning new things. And uh, there are, you know, it's a big difference to for development the young players here and then back in Czech. It's, it's totally Just like different. the details or what, what's yeah, the biggest yeah. difference? Yeah, a lot of details, a lot of, uh, lot of things. Uh, I'm not sure if I can tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that, you know. <laughs> but, no, no, we don't want to let the secrets out because we know Laval is really good. But uh, like, what was your impression of the first practice? I, I've been to a lot of those practices. I didn't get to see yours, but the new guys are often like, whoa, there's a lot going on. Were you kind of taken aback the first practice you had with the Rocket? Yeah, I remember my first practice was uh, only with the group of, group of guys who just came from quarantine. So it was it was really hard. <laughs> I felt like I'll show up. So... <laughs> It was hard. And I remember when I went after that practice to see the whole team on the ice. And for me, it was like, wow, this is quick. So <laughs> that that uh, that was really impressive. Are you happy with your program? Like, do you ever take a moment? You're just 18 years old. Um you were captain of the your 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 world junior team. You played in, you know, in the pro league in Czech, and then you come here and you play AHL or sorry, OHL. Now you're playing professional hockey at 18 years old in North America. Do you ever take a moment and think like, wow, I've had quite a journey so far? Um, probably not yet like this. I, I don't think about it like this. You know, I am, 
I'm kind of lucky. I told you that, that I can play AHL right now, and it's a great that I get this opportunity from 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 organizations. So uh, it's it's amazing, and I'm uh, happy for that. And uh, no, I I didn't think about it like this. I'm just trying to always stay focused on uh, the day, not on the past. So maybe maybe later I will think about it like this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You take it. You take a chance to get back right now. So much has happened that you don't even have a minute to look back. But how has it been this year, kind of dealing with all this? We know. Listen, like things are difficult right now for a lot of people. We're lucky. You're lucky to be playing hockey. I'm lucky to be talking about hockey. How has it been to? to has it been easier to focus? I, I spoke to your teammate Ryan Paling, and he said actually it's a little easier to focus this year. How has it been for you? Mm, yeah, maybe maybe he's right. Actually, uh, it's more more easier to focus because only thing I can do today is every day is like to do hockey stuff and uh, maybe later a little school, but not too often, <laughs> but yeah, just, just, just hockey. So, so that's, that's maybe easier. Are you, so are you still doing schooling right now? I have no idea. I'm just curious right now. Cause that's, I yeah, find that yeah. fascinating when guys have to balance school and hockey. So you are, what are you finishing uh, high school right now or what's going yeah, on? I'm, I'm on high school and I should finish it. Uh, not soon. <laughs> not 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 soon. Well, hey man, that's still pretty cool that you're doing it. How do you balance? How do you balance school and sport? That 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 must be difficult, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of hard, but um, I think I have a good relationship with the teachers, so they 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 always help me with when I need it. So uh, I should graduate not this year, but not next year, and uh, I I believe I can make it. So. <laughs> No, uh, they're just they're just great. So I have this opportunity from the Czech school, so uh, it's more easier. History in the Making is brought to you by Tkadal Spa, Montreal's official team store. From lifestyle brands to jerseys and beyond, Tkadal Spa has a style for every sports fan in your life. Head to tkadalspa.com and use coupon code HISTORYCH10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Visit tkadalspa.com today. So speaking of education, you've had uh, quite an education on the ice this year, not just from the coaches, but I'm sure there's some veterans on the team that have uh, given you some advice, right? Has, has anyone kind of taken you under their wing uh, this season? Oh, I had uh, a lot of a lot of things happen to me this season. I remember when I uh, went with senior national team. So uh, that was pretty good. And I actually, I, I was in a team with few guys who played in Laval. <laughs> so, so, uh, they gave me some advices. Like, uh, if you, if you remember Jezabek, it's, it's kind of hard for you to, to understand, but maybe you understand. Yeah. 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 He was okay. a, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> I was a big fan of his and I, I still wonder why he had all the tools to make it, but that's a whole other thing. But no, no, I was a big fan of Jezabek. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he gave me a lot of advices, but, uh, what well, else? Like, I, like about what though? Because you know, obviously, not everyone. It doesn't work out for everyone, and it probably didn't work out perfectly for him. Did he give you any advice about how to make it work? Um, no, he just probably told me some experiences, what to expect. So that's that's uh, really really uh, helped me. He he told me how the the people are great here, like they love hockey. So uh, that's quite a good. But uh, what else? I, I had a big opportunity, like. Uh, to talk with Tomas Kalkanets, so that was was pretty good. <laughs> he's was a, he's good. a legend here, a legend, yeah, of course. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what did what did what did Thomas tell you? Um, he's not talk- he, like he he looks like he's pretty dry, but he's got a bit of a sense of humor, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially when uh, when uh, he talk with Czech guys, so we have a kind of different humor, humor maybe. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we talk about maybe more than hours. So yeah, we talk a lot. What um, what's it like playing with guys like Thomas Plakanitz? Because you know we watch him play, but it must be pretty darn cool to play with a guy like that, right? Yeah, I never had the opportunity to play with him, but uh, one time. Oh, he I wasn't played on a- the team. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't on the team. I should have looked first. Sorry, but, my my yeah, apologies. But-, but there are some pretty big names on here that what's it like playing with some of these guys that have amazing, that have had amazing careers. 
Uh, yeah, for sure it was it was pretty good. I saw a lot of players who played in KHL, but uh, they already had uh, NHL careers, so uh, that was really good. And uh, only thing I did was just uh, look at them, watch them, what they do, what uh, how they play, how they prepare for the games, for the practices, warm ups, everything. So it was big, big, uh, big school for me. You were with the World Juniors. Um, obviously, you're captain not too long ago, and uh, the years before that. I mean, I'm looking at your page here, and it's you know uh, under under 16, under 18. What kind of lessons did you learn playing for the national team, especially when you would face teams like Canada that you know obviously were superpowers, or or teams like Sweden or teams like Russia? What kind of lessons did you take from uh, playing with the Czech uh, national team against those teams? Uh, lessons are just. Uh... You know, we are always going to these games for for win. Uh, sometimes we don't we don't win that because when you see this year World Juniors in the quarterfinals against Canada, they just beat us three to nil, and that's all. But uh, we always go to these games for the win, uh, no matter what. And uh, yeah, uh, I think I said it in some interviews. I remember when I was uh, last year at World Juniors, and we play against Canada, they beat us seven to two, like. Not a good game for us. And uh, I saw a lot of guys who are so good and um, are, I don't know, signed with NHL, drafted. And uh, that kind of give me uh, something, some feeling to, to go to Canada, to, to Hamilton Bulldogs. Uh, after, after these games, I just saw that I have to go to the OHL because, oh my God, these guys are so good and uh, they play there. So I have to go there. That's a big decision. I have to ask you a question, Jan. When did you learn to speak English? Because your English is amazing. Like, it's fantastic. It's top quality. When did you learn to speak oh, English? And I'm you. sorry if that comes off as an ignorant question. I'm just <laughs> curious because your English is amazing. Thank you. I I, uh, I think just our parents want, wanted to have a good education in us. Uh, my brother, he's studying in a college in USA. So uh, we just had a... Uh, extra or extra lessons with a teacher um next time i had a american teacher who was in czech so sometimes i just went there to just do a little talk and uh then probably i watched some uh american tv shows everything would help me so i i believe this is really important because uh have a good language uh, know what to say, uh, understand to the other people in uh, this country is important because it makes the things easier. Absolutely. And, and obviously it helps with the transition. Now, there's a whole other language in this province, um, French, obviously. Yeah. And I'm not going to ask you, have you learned French yet? Because that's not reasonable. But um, how has it been being around uh, in a province with two different languages? There's probably different languages in the locker room. Has that, uh, you know, has that impacted you whatsoever or you just focus on the game? Mm -hmm. I, I can't, uh, when I go outside uh, for groceries, uh, everyone just speak in French at first, I think. So I have to switch and just say I, if, if they speak English, but. Yeah, I think everyone speaks English there too. But uh, in our locker room, the, the guys are like, uh, if they're talking with uh, me or in front of me, they just try to speak English because they know it's kind of, kind of maybe, I don't know, rude that I don't understand. or I don't know how to say that, but uh, they're oh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 purely impolite to speak in yeah. front of someone if they don't know the language. So okay. Yeah, so it's pretty good that the guys uh, understand that it's hard for us. Very much so. And again, it's just impressive how good you are at it. How have they been? How have those guys been? I know a lot of them. They're usually pretty good to rookies. How have they treated you? Did they haze you at all? Did they give you a hard time at the beginning? Um, how has it been as a newcomer on the Laval Rocket? Mm, I believe it was uh, uh, not too hard, I think, because the, the boys are are amazing. Uh, we have a really good mm, really good uh team like uh, we we understand to each other we try to protect each other you can see it on the ice when somebody hit our player there is a fight so Michael Pizzetta uh, is right there you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 so that's 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 what I really like uh, so I think we're really good and uh, the guys the older guys just help us the rocky guys to do to, to feel better how have you guys maintained momentum this year like 
it's been there's been interruptions. Um, you guys are really good. I mean, you're one of the best teams in the AHL. How have you guys maintained that level of momentum and that high morale? Because I speak to your teammates and they say, we go into every game expecting to win. Like we, if we work hard enough, how do you guys maintain that with everything that's changing constantly? Your schedule just got changed today. Like at, right as we started to record, your schedule got just got changed again. How do you maintain focus? Yeah, I I uh, I agree with the guys who uh, said this. Uh, we have that mindset. I I I just I think that uh, the coaches, uh, head coach, and uh, all the coaches just try to uh, show us and. Uh, Tell us like the mindset is important to to try to win every single game. So that's what I really like. That's what I uh, that's why I didn't have probably <laughs> because when I remember my times in uh, in Czech, we didn't have this mindset. So this no, is, mm, it was kind of bad. We we most of the games, most of the seasons, we played at the bottom, so we didn't win too much like here. So uh, this is really good for me. <laughs> What's been the biggest shock on the ice since? Because you said it's a little different from, uh, it's a little bit different from Czech Republic, but it's also different from Hamilton, right? Like you're professional yeah. hockey now. You're playing against guys that are 35 that have beards that are older than I am. Um, what's been the biggest shock or the biggest change for you in terms of your on ice play? Um, the biggest shock was probably the the physical part of this game. It was. Uh, probably <laughs> something different uh the fights i've in my uh career back in check was like maybe one fight <laughs> and here's one fight per game so <laughs> i was i was uh, pretty shocked when i saw it in the games and uh i like it i like it that's what i said like uh protecting our guys you know so so this is really good i love it and uh, yeah the physical side is uh probably the most thing, then uh, of course, the hockey here is so quick. Um, it's it's like one of the like fastest league, probably. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but uh, it's it's like this. It's it's just quick. You mentioned Alex Burrows earlier, and I saw a smile got on your face when you mentioned him. Every player seems to really you know, have enjoyed their time with Alex Burrows. What's he like to be around? Like, what did, you know, obviously he's a great example of, of, of perseverance, but why do, why do all his players love him so much? Um, because he has this enthusiasm. He has the passion. He loves the game. So, uh, and uh, he has the joy every day. So he, he, he always came to the ring with a smile on his face and uh, that positive energy and that mood, uh, always infect us so we were positive too so that's that's what i like yeah well that matches really well with your own personality because that's what everyone tells me so you know for those that don't know uh when jan was in hamilton um and tell me if this is true or not but your coach told me they're bringing you to the rink about an hour and a half ahead you know with your billet family and then about a weekend you said can i get to the rink three hours ahead <laughs> you know so that gives that that, that that i'm telling you right now this guy uh, loves preparation and he loves being ready so it doesn't surprise me that you love um you know that you kind of gravitate towards but is that true that you asked them within a week i need to get to the rink earlier is that yeah yeah of course uh what, what, why I, why do you need yeah i didn't have a car so <laughs> i i just asked for for uh because I just like it. Uh, I like to be prepared. I like to do my things. Uh, I always have a lot of things to do at the ring. And I also like to, to hang out with the guys there with the, all the stuff to talk, just to talk because um, there's nothing to do here. So what should I be? Why should I be here uh, in my room that I can be at the ring and do something uh, what gives me joy? So uh, that's why. Uh, for me, one and a half hours is it's not not a good time. I need more. I always need more. You know, it's funny because I show up for games when I was um, in the press box. I'd show up four hours early. But that's just because I I wanted it to. Be, I wanted to be alone in an arena. I think you probably worked a little bit harder than I did. I was eating those, you know, the the, the pogos, the corn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still eat those, um, but I'm sure those aren't on your menu. Hey, listen, Jan, thank you so much for your time. I want to give you a chance to. I, I've gotten a lot from other people about you and they all tell me the same thing I, you know there's a reason they're excited about you not only you're a good smart young man is that you're a good talented player what's something that Habs fans maybe don't know about Yan Mishak 
I don't know what to say. <laughs> so you're just so open that there's no there's no hidden secrets. There's no uh, you know there's no uh, like like at one point nothing. There's no funny story at the uh, at the store or anything like that. It's been just. It sounds oh. like your whole transition has been pretty darn good, right, North America? Yeah, I think so. It's uh, you know for me, I'm I'm living the dream. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Always, my mom asked me uh, every call if I miss home. And I always say like, uh, no, I, I don't miss home. I'm just living my dream, and I, I, I like the process, and I, uh, I'm going for my dream. So uh, I miss you guys, but uh, I like to be here. So. <laughs> and finally, because you brought her up, how proud was your mom and your dad? Um, obviously, you know, I'm sure they helped you along this journey. But just to see you get selected in the draft, they must have been pretty darn happy, eh? Uh, uh, it was it was special day for me for my whole family because uh, it's a big sacrifice and uh, my parents what did to me my whole family what did to me how many time they just lost because of I wanted to play hockey <laughs> so uh, it was a big day for us and uh, big big uh, you know everything what I did for for some reason and uh, it happened so we were so happy. Behind every great prospect, every great player, there's a really strong family. And, I, and obviously, I'm so happy that you gave them the credit for, the, for their sacrifice there. And obviously, it's paying off. Jan, thank you so much for having taken time with us. I'm glad you have one of the best attitudes I've ever seen from a hockey player. And um, I know Habs fans are excited. So uh, I hope we get an opportunity to play in front of them because you're playing at the Bell Center right now, but you haven't played at the Bell Center in you know when there's 21,000 you've probably played when there was what 10,000 but not 21,000 yet right <laughs> yeah no never played in, uh, in for a lot of how, how much do you look forward to one day putting on the canadians jersey and seeing 22,223 people in the stands oh that's uh that's another dream so uh a lot of things to do and uh i just want to make it true so <laughs> that's what i want so- so you're going to get there when you get there. And thank you so much, Jan. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your yeah, time. No I know it's a hectic year. And um, has fans, keep an eye on this one. He's a really good one. Thanks, Jan. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a wrap on this season of History in the Making. We had, I mean, I loved it. I hope you loved it. Um, we had an opportunity to speak to some of the most exciting players, uh, prospects. coming. You know, Cole Caulfield, uh, Caden Gooley. Going up the list, Jordan Harris, Jesse Lone, and Caden Primo. Um, Ryan Paling, like we spoke to so many fantastic guys, Raphael Hervé Pinard, uh, Joël Bouchard, uh, Daniel Jacob, uh, you know, Veilleux, like there's the list goes on and on. I think the message here is not only is the future very, very bright, um, there are a lot of options for Montreal Canadiens and development isn't something that happens overnight, but we're starting to see really, you know, some very, very uh, exciting uh, hints at it. Like we're not there yet, but we're getting there and it takes a long time. It's an overused sentence or term, but it's a process. And this process started when Joel Bouchard took over. It hasn't reached f- full fruition yet, but we're getting there. We're seeing the impact. And that's nothing but good news for me, for you, and for the Montreal Canadiens. So this will be our last episode uh, of the season. But um, don't hesitate to send us suggestions for anything you'd like to hear in the future. So thanks for joining us this season. That is a wrap for now. Go Habs, go. Go Habs, go.